Hi, this is Meg Black from Meg Black Studios. I had been scheduled to give a lecture at the Topsfield Town Library in May about the picturesque movement and its impact on Topsfield and local landscape. But as with so many things, the lecture has been canceled. And so I decided to give the lecture in stages um, and post it to my website and um, my newsletter. So this is the first excerpt of the lecture about the picturesque movement and its influence on Topsfield landscape. So the picturesque movement uh, begins with this painting by Claude Lorraine and it's from 1641 and it's called The Seaport with the Embarkment of Saint Ursula. And when we look at the painting we notice this woman right here. This is Ursula and she's carrying the flag of her martyrdom. And we see that she's standing in front of this temple-like structure that's actually a replica of sorts of um, Bermante's Tempietto, which is in Rome. And the Tempietto is said to be placed over the, oh, the uh, location where St. Peter was martyred. So this gives us the idea that she's leaving from Rome and she's going to embark on a journey uh, at which point she's supposed to meet up and marry a pagan uh, prince. And she doesn't want to do that because she is a saint, she's a Christian, and is with many early Christians, she does, wants nothing to do with this pagan. So we see that she's leaving this temple with what will be actually 11,000 of her maidens. And all of these women will end up being martyred by being um, arrowed to death by, uh, Chris, by um, Ursula's uh, fiance, I'm sorry. So St. Ursula, she's a British princess and that's, there she is in yellow. She refuses to marry her pagan king and she holds the flag of her emblem. And this is a red and white flag she's holding. She's going to return to Cologne from Rome. And for her part, she will be shot through the heart by her actual fiance. And then again, her 11,000 virgin friends will be executed as well. We do not know if Ursula was an actual person. Here she is. There she is with her flag. See? Um, because we don't know if she may have just been a, um, like a legend. And that's why we call it the legend of St. Ursula. But her name has become synonymous with Christian saints. In fact, there's a lot of girls' schools called St. Ursula's. So uh, it's going to be kind of hard to drop her from the roster <laughs> at this point. But the big thing about this uh, painting, other than the story and the very active composition, is the background where we see this very golden light. And we, we sense that Ursula's taking off in the very early dawn, or she's taking off late at night, or in the evening rather. And it gives us this scent of light, the sense of light that's very romantic, that's very beautiful and dreamy. It's not a high noon painting at all. And this is a very new idea that Claude Duran comes up with, this idea of nostalgia, this sort of longing for the past. And this is again, 1641, when there's a lot of exploration in the world. We know that at this point, a lot of these explorers are coming over to America, for example. So the idea of having a painting with uh, ships in it would actually be something that a lot of people would be excited about. And for his part, these paintings became so popular with their golden light that they actually set off a rage, a stylistic rage, where you could buy these glasses. And if you looked through the glass, as we see this woman doing here in this painting, you would see this kind of golden light. You would see this kind of, uh, you know, dreamy, hazy, bluish, or I'm sorry, yellowish light. 
So he became so famous for these paintings that he, he, he was so known for his stroke of genius, as we say, that clawed glasses, which were a treated mirror contained in a box, became wildly popular as a portable drawing and painting aid in the late 18th century. And amateur artists would bring them on their sketching tours and look through the light into the landscape, trying to come up, recapture that kind of dreamy light that Claude Lorraine was so famous for. The expression, seeing the world through rose-colored glasses, it comes from this idea, uh, this uh, popularity of the Claude glass. And again, we see this woman here in this painting, and she's actually holding a Claude glass. And she's, you know, if she looks through it into this landscape behind her, she will, um, of course, have this wonderful vision of this dreamy landscape. So this whole picturesque movement of having these beautiful landscape paintings with this dreamy light goes all the way back to 1641 and can be traced to this painting of the Embarkment of St. Ursula by Claude Lorraine, which is now in the National Gallery in London. And I was able to visit the area in which landscape painting in England had become very famous. And one of the places I went to was Broughton Castle in North Oxfordshire, England. And this is where, you know, people like, artists like Claude Loran would have been commissioned by people who would have lived in a castle like this. The Lord and Lady Broughton are still the owners of this beautiful castle, and we actually were able to meet with them when we went to this on this tour. I say we because my mom and I went on this tour. And I created this painting of this image that I took, this photograph. I took the photograph and I painted from the photograph of this courtyard garden from Broughton Castle. So this was my first attempt of being an artist who was influenced by the uh, picturesque movement and made a painting of this experience. So this ends the first installment of this lecture that I will be giving online because again, the library is closed due to the virus and I will continue this with uh, the picturesque movement coming to America and how we will see how George Washington will get in on the rage of all things picturesque. So thank you for uh, being at my lecture and I will upload the next installment soon.